Imagine this, you're 300 feet below the surface of the Atlantic Ocean, sealed inside a steel cylinder with 150 other men. There are no windows, no phone calls, no emails. The air you breathe is manufactured by machines. The water you drink was seawater yesterday and you won't see sunlight, feel wind, or hear a bird for the next six months. This isn't a science fiction scenario. This is the daily reality for submariners aboard nuclear-powered submarines, the most invisible, most powerful, and most psychologically demanding warships ever built. Today, we're diving deep into the question that haunts every naval strategist and fascinates every engineering mind. How do submarines stay hidden underwater for six months straight? And more importantly, how do the men inside survive it? To understand why submarines stay underwater so long, we need to understand what they're doing down there. Modern submarines fall into two categories, attack submarines, the hunters, and ballistic missile submarines, the silent guardians of nuclear deterrence. Both share one critical mission requirement, they must remain undetectable. Attack submarines like the American Virginia class or British Astute class patrol strategic waters, track enemy vessels, gather intelligence, and prepare to strike if war breaks out. Ballistic missile submarines, SSBNs in military terminology, carry intercontinental nuclear missiles and represent the second strike capability that prevents nuclear war. If every military base, every airfield, every command center were destroyed in a surprise attack, these submarines would still be out there hidden, ready to retaliate. This doctrine has a name, mutually assured destruction, and it only works if submarines are truly invisible. Staying hidden means staying submerged. In World War II, submarines were really just surface ships that could dive temporarily. They ran on diesel engines, needed to surface for air, and spent most of their time on top of the water. But in 1954, everything changed. USS Nautilus became the world's first nuclear-powered submarine. Nuclear reactors don't need oxygen. They can run for decades without refueling. Suddenly, submarines can stay underwater indefinitely, limited only by the humans inside. And that's where our story really begins. Let's start with the most obvious problem. Humans need oxygen. A submarine with 1 in 150 crew members consumes enormous amounts of air. So how do you breathe underwater for six months? The answer is surprisingly elegant. You make it. Every nuclear submarine has a device called an electrolysis unit. It takes seawater, passes an electrical current through it, and splits the H2O molecules apart. You hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen gets pumped into the atmosphere. The hydrogen is either vented overboard or burned off safely. But making oxygen isn't enough. Humans exhale carbon dioxide, about two pounds per person per day. In a sealed environment, CO2 builds up quickly, causing headache, confusion, and eventually unconsciousness. So submarines use carbon dioxide scrubber, chemical filters containing lithium hydroxide or monoethanolamine that absorb CO2 from the air. Then there's the nuclear reactor itself, the beating heart of the submarine. A naval nuclear reactor uses enriched uranium to create a controlled chain reaction generating heat. That heat boils water into steam. The steam spins turbines connected to generators and propulsion system. One reactor can power an entire submarine for 25 years without refueling. But nuclear reactors produce radiation, so the reactor compartment is surrounded by layers of shielding, water, lead, steel, protecting the crew. No one enters the reactor room while it's operating except for emergency repairs. Even then, exposure time is measured in minutes. The reactor also provides something else crucial, fresh water. The submarine has evaporators that boil seawater, separate the salt, and condense pure water for drinking, cooking, and showers. Every drop of water aboard, except seawater used for cooling, is made from the ocean itself. This combination, oxygen generation, CO2 scrubbing, nuclear propulsion, and water desalination creates a closed loop life support system. It's technology NASA studied when designing spacecraft. Engineering keeps you alive, but stealth keeps you hidden. The submarine underwater is hunted by sound. Sonar, sound navigation and ranging, sends acoustic pulses through the water. If those pulses hit something solid, they bounce back, revealing location, speed, and size. So the first rule of submarine warfare is simple, be quiet. Every system aboard a modern submarine is designed for silence. Machinery sits on floating rubber mounts that absorb vibrations. Propellers are shaped to minimize cavitation. The tiny bubbles that form when blades spin too fast. The hull is covered with anechoic tiles. Rubber coatings fill with air pockets that absorb sonar waves instead of reflecting them. Even the crew is trained in silent running. During drills or when enemy forces are near, no one runs. Hatches close slowly. Tools are secured with foam padding. Conversations happen in whispers. One dropped wrench could give away your position to a destroyer hunting overhead, but submarines don't just hide, they listen. The sonar suite aboard a modern attack submarine can hear a ship on the surface 
from 50 miles away. It can distinguish between a cargo freighter and a warship. It can identify specific submarines by the unique acoustic signature of their propellers. Sonar operators, called sonar techs, spend thousands of hours training their ears, learning to separate whale songs from submarine screws, volcanic activity from torpedo launches. This is acoustic warfare a game of cat and mouse played in the total darkness where the first one to make a mistake dies. And it's not theoretical. In February 2009, the British submarine HMS Vanguard and the French submarine Le Triomphant collided at low speed in the Atlantic. Both were ballistic missile submarines, both carrying nuclear warheads, both trying to remain undetected. Neither heard the other until impact. They were that quiet. Now we come to the hardest part, the people. A submarine deployment typically lasts six months, some patrols stretch longer. During that time, you live in a space smaller than most houses, shared with 150 other men. Privacy doesn't exist. You sleep in a rack, a bed the size of a coffin, stacked three high. If you're junior enlisted, your rack might be in Torpedo Alley, sleeping next to live weapons. The schedule is punishing. Submarine crews operate on an 18-hour day, six hours on watch, 12 hours off. This cycle never matches Earth's 24-hour day, so your body never adapts. Circadian rhythms collapse. Sleep deprivation becomes chronic. There's no sunlight, no fresh air, no horizon. The only way to mark time is by the ship's clock and the meal schedule. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, they lose meaning when it's always dark. Always artificial light. Always the same recycled air. The food is good, actually. Submarines are known for having the best chow in the Navy, partly to maintain morale partly because storage space allows for variety. Cooks work miracles with frozen ingredients, baking fresh bread, preparing elaborate meals. For the first month, you eat well, but by month three, the fresh food is gone. You're eating from cans, frozen stores, and prepackaged rations. By month five, boredom sets in. The same meals, the same faces, the same steel corridors stretching into sameness. And then there's the silence about what happens on the surface. Submariner families receive no information during deployment. No emails, no phone calls. Communication is one way. Family grams, short censored messages, arrive irregularly, 40 words maximum. No bad news. The Navy doesn't tell you if your father died or your wife filed for divorce until you surface. There's a reason for this. A distressed submariner is a liability. Could make mistakes, compromise the mission, but the psychological cost is staggering. Men miss the births of their children, learn about deaths weeks after funerals, and surface to find marriages ended. And yet, they volunteer for this. Submarine service is entirely voluntary. These sailors choose the darkness. Living underwater for six months isn't just psychologically demanding, it's genuinely dangerous. Fire is the submariner's greatest fear. In a sealed environment, fire consumes oxygen and produces toxic smoke with nowhere to go. Every sailor trains extensively in firefighting. Breathing apparatuses are stored throughout the ship. Fire drills happen constantly. In April 1970, the Soviet submarine K-8 suffered fires in multiple compartments. The crew fought for hours, surfacing and evacuating some personnel, but the submarine eventually sank, taking 52 men with it. Fire underwater is almost always fatal. Then there's flooding. The submarine's hull is designed to withstand immense pressure, but it's not inviolable. Pipe ruptures, valve failures, or collision damage can cause catastrophic flooding. The crew has seconds to seal compartments, isolating the flood before it spread. In 2000, the Russian submarine Kursk suffered an internal explosion during a torpedo exercise. Water flooded the forward compartments. 23 sailors survived in the aft section for hours, writing final letters to their families before the air ran out. No rescue came in time. Modern submarines have escape trunks airlocks that allow crew to surface individually in emergencies but they only work in shallow water. In deep ocean, escape is impossible. You either fix the problem or you die with the ship. There are quieter dangers too. Radiation leaks, equipment failures, human error. The entire submarine depends on thousands of systems working perfectly simultaneously for months. One mistake, one oversight, and disaster follows. And yet, despite these risks, nuclear submarine forces have maintained deterrence patrols continuously since the 1960s. At this very moment, submarines are hiding in the Atlantic, Pacific, the Arctic. No one knows where. Not even their own governments know exact locations once they leave port. This is the paradox of submarine service. They endure extreme isolation, extreme danger, and extreme psychological stress so that nuclear war never happens. They are guardians no one sees, protecting a peace they may never know they preserve. When a submarine finally surfaces, after six months, the crew emerges into a world they barely recognize. The sunlight is blinding. The wind feels alien. 
colors seem too vivid after months of gray steel and dim red lights. Some submariners experience temporary agoraphobia, panic in open spaces after living in confinement for so long. Physically, they've changed. Lack of sunlight means vitamin D deficiency despite supplements. The 18-hour watch cycle has disrupted every biological rhythm. Some lose weight from stress, others gain it from lack of exercise and boredom eating. Everyone looks exhausted. Psychologically, the transition is harder. Families have moved on without them. Children have grown. Relationships have strained or ended. The Submariner has to relearn how to be a father, a husband, a son. Roles that felt frozen underwater but evolved in his absence. The divorce rate among submarine crews is significantly higher than the general Navy population. The suicide rate is also elevated. The Navy provides counseling, reintegration programs, and family support services but the challenges remain immense. And then, after a few months of shore leave and maintenance, they do it again. But here's what they don't often talk about. The pride. Submarine service creates a bond unlike any other military experience. These sailors trust each other with their lives every single day. They know that the person sleeping two feet away, the person monitoring the reactor, the person driving the boat, they're all counting on each other to stay sharp, stay vigilant, and stay alive. They also know that their silent patrols prevent war. The very existence of undetectable submarines carrying nuclear weapons makes first strike scenarios suicidal. This isn't heroism in combat. It's heroism in patient. The willingness to endure darkness so the world above can live in light. And that matters more than most people will ever know. So how do submarines stay hidden underwater for six months straight? The answer is a combination of engineering brilliance and human endurance. They generate their own oxygen. They scrub their own air. They produce their own water. They move in silence through an ocean that amplifies every sound. And they do it all while carrying the weight of nuclear deterrence. The knowledge that if they ever have to launch their weapons, the world has already ended. But the real answer is simpler and harder. The people inside choose to endure. They choose to live in darkness. They choose to miss their families. They choose to face fires, floods, and the crushing pressure of the deep ocean. They make these sacrifices not for glory. There are no parades for submarine crews, no headlines, but because someone has to. Someone has to patrol the silent frontier. Someone has to carry the missiles that ensure they're never launched. Someone has to be the invisible shield that prevents the unthinkable. The submarines are engineering marvels, but the sailors inside, there's something more. They're proof that human beings can endure almost anything isolation, danger, darkness, if they believe the cause is worth it. And for six months at a time, hundreds of men around the world prove it every single day. They descend into the deep and they stay hidden so that we don't have to. If you found this video fascinating, you'll want to watch our deep dive into the most secretive submarine missions of the Cold War operations so classified they weren't declassified for 50 years. Click the link on screen to learn about the submarines that changed history without anyone knowing they were there. Thanks for watching. And remember, somewhere, right now, a submarine is out there, watching, waiting, hidden.